don't do this. Misconceptions on adultery and fornication. Matthew 5, 27 and 28. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you, that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her, hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. I am here today to encourage people to flee from sexual immorality. Fornication and adultery all begin with thoughts. No one wakes up and finds themselves in the act. We can trace all sexual impurity back to a thought. The first step of adultery or fornication is always the mind thinking about it. This is the stage where it is necessary to kill that spirit and never allow it to grow. But the devil is not giving people the chance, and many people are not helping. Adultery isn't something to be played with. Adultery will break your marriage. Have you ever seen the pain of a broken marriage? That pain isn't anything you would want to sign up for. Have you ever seen a man mess his marriage up because of adultery and then try to get his wife back? I've seen grown men cry because the full force of the consequences of adultery was hitting them in the face. Don't give adultery the chance. Once you open that door, believe me, Satan will do all he can to make the sin a stronghold. And once he has a stronghold in your life, he won't leave without a fight. He won't give up territory. Don't even open the door up to sin. And for those of you who believe you can live a promiscuous life before marriage, what makes you think you will be able to control yourself when you are married? Just because you are married, it doesn't mean you get the superpower of self-control. If you are promiscuous as a single person, more than likely you will be promiscuous when you are married. It becomes a habit. Fornication with this one, and with that one, and with this one. Now I am getting married. All of the sudden, I have self-control. Life doesn't work like that. Don't lie to yourself. You need to know that your flesh will still remember its lifestyle of fornicating with whoever it wants and whenever it wants. Flee from fornication. Flee from adultery. If the thought comes, run. If the opportunity to commit fornication or adultery comes, don't begin to sing praise and worship songs in that situation. Run. If you are tempted, run. The truth is, I don't know your life. I don't know what hidden sins you have. So if there is one person who is not judging you, it's me. But I want to talk to someone today who is living a secret life that no one knows about. You could have a mistress in another town or state, and you think you have it all covered and hidden. Maybe you have been committing adultery for years and your wife or husband has absolutely no idea. No idea whatsoever and you think you are getting away with it. But I want to remind you, there is a God in heaven who is watching you, who sees everything you are doing and you will have to answer for those things one day. But I encourage you right now, wherever you are, call out to God and cry out to him, he will hear. If you know the kind of damage adultery and fornication will cause to your life, if you know the number of problems that are not yours that you will be carrying all around, you will never let that thought of adultery or fornication stay in you. Destinies have been destroyed. Don't give in to that spirit. Don't allow it to push you. Jesus said thinking about it is a sin. Yes, it is, but if it grows beyond thought and you refuse to destroy it, you will get into a problem that will make you regret it. The reason why so many people choose to stay on the level of adultery in the heart is that they are afraid of getting caught. They know the consequences of this sin. They know what it will do to their marriage. They know how it can destroy their lives 
and they still allow the thought to remain in them. If you have the thought of adultery in your heart right now, if there is someone who has made themselves available for the devil to use to drop the seed of adultery in your heart, you need to know that you must act against that thought before it gets you into trouble. If you don't do that, one day you will stand up and say, since Jesus said those who have the thought in them have sinned, why can't you act on it then and just know you have been sinning all along? I want to tell you to destroy this thought. Do you think if Joseph had this kind of thought in his heart, he would not have slept with his master's wife? One day, the devil will make the temptation so close that you will get the chance to commit adultery physically. If you have not destroyed the thought in you, you will fall into temptation. Joseph did not sit and think about the woman's offer. He did not say he would think about it. Joseph made his stance clear in that situation. He was not afraid of what the outcome might be. He did not care what people might say, but he rejected the offer. Genesis 39, 9, King James Version. There is none greater in this house than I, neither hath he kept back anything from me but thee, because thou art his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? This is the statement of someone who doesn't have the thought of adultery in his heart. This is why Jesus wants you to destroy that thought. He wants you to stop committing adultery in your heart. Jesus does not even want it to make it to your heart, let alone acting it. You need to stop it. You need to clean your heart and ask God to create in you a clean heart. There is another person who did not give the reply of Joseph, but went straight into that sin. That is Reuben, the first son of Jacob, who slept with his father's wife. For Reuben to do this, he must have had the thought. Reuben did not kill that thought. Maybe he also thought if he had sinned in his heart, then why not just act it? This action landed Reuben a great curse from his father. There is always a negative thing coming out of adultery or any form of sexual immorality. There is no escape from the consequences of these things. You cannot run away from the negative impact. David tried to run away from the impact after he slept with Bathsheba. He prayed, he wept, he did everything, but the consequences of adultery or sexual immorality came on him. Have you already committed this act and you think you are safe because your partner hasn't caught you? Are you enjoying sexual immorality because no one has caught you? You are destroying yourself. I will tell you what will happen to you in the physical and the spiritual when you commit adultery. 1 Corinthians 6, 16 What? Know ye not that he which is joined to an harlot is one body? For two, saith he, shall be one flesh. Paul said, Don't you know that if you sleep with anyone, most importantly, outside of your marriage, you have become one with them? I don't care what you want to call them. They are good people. They are prayerful or they are just nice. I don't care. You have joined yourself with them, both physically and spiritually. This is a message people don't like to hear, but it is the truth. The wonderful thing about God is that regardless of how many people you committed adultery or fornication with, God can and will forgive you if you repent of your sins. You are not doomed to hell. You have not committed the unforgivable sin. You are not going to hell. Cry out to the Lord. If you have the thought in you now, it is never too late to get rid of it. Don't give yourself up to committing it physically, but ask God to create in you a clean heart and renew the right spirit in you. Ask Jesus to forgive you for the evil thought. Ask Him to forgive you for the sins of adultery in your heart and make sure you are not pushed into committing it. 
If you have committed adultery physically, God did not say he will not forgive you. Jesus did not say he will reject you if you come back to him. Look, that's your marriage that adultery has destroyed. Jesus can still rebuild it if you believe. You need to run away from adultery. You need to run from fornication. You need to pray very tough prayers to break the bond that is between you and those you have committed adultery with. You need to open the door of your life to Jesus before it becomes too late.